شود هم داش برزان خوش حالی نم روش دقل تند بین ل سال چه چی تر ل سال چه کانی اکادمیای مگا مایند پلاس و پیوسته و راه نان و رایش کاری دزانم بابتی ام شما به زمان انگلیسی دب ولی مقدمه که هندک باشی اکادمیا و خدمت وزاری کانی تی او بر کردی بر دکل وای موت سخید گورن دبو انگلیسی انشالله اکادمی های مگا مایند پلاس لسه تورده کرده که پرورده راهنان راوشکاری اگر سرانی او ویب سایت ساده بکی که mmp.ac دبینی تیده باسی خزمت گزاری کن کراوه تیده باسی برهمکانی پیشو اما جان پی کراوه هر بها همو ویدیو کانی ویبینار کان هر هموی لیره دا زور با آسانی بردست کراون زایدن او پیجو اکاونتو یان او سکویانی که تیدا دتوانن پیواندی من پیوا بکن لوندره بردست لگل جماری تلفونو نو نشانه کش و کوچک من سه تاوری، تی سه تاوری سرچیا، تاوری پرورده به معنای فراوانکی، تاوری راهنان، دیسان راهنان لبواری زور و زور، اروها تاوری رایشکاری، رایشکاری لروی زانستی و لروی اکادمی و لروی پروردهی او، لروی راهنانی شو و تن خلی کلم لمو پیش کرده تو، تنی خلی تریش لب نامه دهه که بتوانیم بیکی. لیره دل سرویسز که اگر خالی دوام بده دکره همو خدمت گزاری کن بر تاب که او استا بر همه کا بر همه تاب کرده کنی اکادمی ای مگا مایند دهم دیشان به تنها هم دیشان به هواشی لگال دستگاهی ترکران کتابی وانه کنی جیان که بزمانی کردی و انگلیسیا کتابی به حزب من و سه صد شست پنج روز لسال اگر کتابی پولکت بر واجب کوا دوای او کتابی دو هزار رنوینی با ما مستعیان دوای کتابیش صد رنوینی با آن اوت نوبو که ل دوای پیشانگای ندولتی هولر بتبگیش تو خرای بردسی خوان رانی برس دگل او اما فرهنگی چه الکترونیش من هیا که فرهنگی زاره ل هر دو سیستمی iOS و سیستمی اندروید کار دکا با خورایی بشه آنلاین استاد از معنی انگلیسی با کردیا داده تو دا پلانی گبر من هیا که فراوان تری بکن اوش هر با خورایش دمینه تو او خدمت گزاریا پشکش با هموانی که بدوای فرهنگی باش دگرن تو که فرهنگی که لزمانی دایک و ورج راو نک لزمان کانی تروزمانی دو موسیم پشت من بستو با فرهنگی لونگمان که پیمانو از ما فرهنگی چیزور معتبره و لم نزی کانا فراوان تر دکره و شانه شی تری شی بردست بی که زور و شو دستو ها شو چند پاس کوی چی بسود و تناند ایوی برایزش دتوانن دولا من تری بکن باوی که و شدا بنیرن و شمان با بنیرن اوی که دیدانی این پیت باید نقصا دتوانین سود لطوانه کانی اوش ورو گریم با فراوان کردنی او فرهنگه لدا توش دا با چند شوزاری زیادری دخیت سر که شوزاری اورامی و شوزاری کرمانجیش زیاد دکره پاشی اوه دگه لانگلیزی کردی لدا تو دا دکره با انگلیزی انگلیزی کردی دوائی پیچوانه دکه نوا دوائی چند پاشکو و چند تایبت من دیشی تره هی که دتوانین زور با آسانی سود به همو کسیرک بگیانه برزان اما لطالا چکن بردوامین هر وحالا برنامه ای ده هتو من ده هی چند خلیک را بگیانین یکی گلو خلانی که پیمانوه استا کاتیتی خلی تکنیک کانی تاکید نوی پی تی ای اکادیمی ها که بو آوانه آرزو من دن تقدیمی ماستر و دکترا بکن رنگ شهر زایش او تویان نبه لسر او تاک کرنویا بسی روش هر روش دو ساعت 
باس لا همو تكنيكا كانو همو بشكاني او تاق كرناو دكري رأي مشتي شي زور بيوست بيجو بيجي تاق كرناو كبكي زيادر تكنيكا كان فيروي زيادر عشناوي با تكنيكا كاني او رنگا روجي دو شما اعلاني بكي و بو حفتي دا هاتو سي روج لسريك شازو حفده و هجدا خلقا بشيوي اونلاين بره و داسي بش ببروغرام الزوما لما عبكاني خوتا تاكو درفت بجيتا زور ترين كستهي دا بجدار بن او كسي كا خلقاش بره و دبا خوي ليكي قلا سنترا باور بكرا و كان بره و بربو بو ماو تندين صال كاوتا شعر زاي چي زور زور باشي هيا و شي تاكو كرنوي كردوا بو دزاني تشتي كو تلاينا كرين جي بيه بدري لا شويراني تر آماد کاری آل سوت و فلزور دکری و راستی امش ویدیوی آماده من هی با آنی که خوازیارن شعر زابن لسر خلی آل سیان تاک نو آل سیان اگر هر کسی گویستی نام من ببنیری یعن سردانی چنالی یوتیوی ایمه بکا لیون بره ویدیوی کام و خورایی بردستن بلام لسر پی تی ای برای من اکم زاره و که خلی چی با شیوه بکری توا کسی چی شعر ازا پیش کشی بکم او که گوتمان اما او اگر در تیوی لپیوندی دابی لگاو اکادمی های مگا ماین پلاس هر شیوه یک بیده توانی بجماره تلفون او جماره تلفون که اصر او جماره وایبر و واتساب و تیلگرام هیا با ناو نیشان او ناو نیشان اکیا لحولیره با ایمیل او ایمیلی فرمی زن کویا ل باولن سکو تورکو ملایت کن لهمی گروپات من هیا اگر دتیو اضافه بی بو او گروپانه دکری ل تلگرام بو شیوه ل واتس اپ بما ل وایبرش اما گروپ کانه یوتیوب چانال کش من هر بو شیوه ل فیس بوک پیجش من هیا گروپش من هیا و کوچ من اوش وب سایت کیا یعنی اگر او کوده یعنی او بار کوده ای او دست چپ سکن بکی دید بارتا او گروپ آلی که پیشتر دن راون با اوی لپیوندی بردوام ده بی و هروها آشنا بی و برهمکان و آگه دار بی لو چالا چانه ای که لآین دشتا انجام ده بی زور باشه اوکی so, uh, uh, I'll change it to English now, because that was just an introduction about uh, the academy. Uh, for tonight, uh, we have selected a very interesting topic, and we have invited a, a, a professional in that field. Uh, she's Professor Dr. Lynn Rose. Uh, she will be talking about Universal Design a Disability Studies Context, um, which is very uh, interesting. I will introduce uh, Professor Dr. Lee Rose, and then uh, we will start the uh, webinar. Uh, as you know, our uh, webinar's duration is 90 minutes. So, uh, but for tonight, uh, maybe the case is different. Uh, um, Professor Lynn Rose could not be uh, with us face-to-face uh, -to -face tonight, so she has recorded the um, webinar and sent it to us, so we will be sharing uh, her slides and her voice uh, with you. Uh, and in case you have additions, we can listen to you, we can record the uh, questions and notes, and uh, there will be contact details of Professor Lynn Rose also. Uh, with the slides, you can contact her or you can contact us, and then we will get back to you soon. Uh, I think uh, the topic of uh, disability studies or the status of disability, uh, people with special needs, uh, is very interesting. And unfortunately, uh, it's not been uh, paid due attention in the education system in our uh, region and in the whole uh, country uh, in general. Uh, let me introduce uh, Professor Lynn Rose very shortly. Uh, though her CV is very rich, 
frankly speaking. Uh, but uh, maybe just because of time, uh, I will try to keep it short, but we will give you the details uh, and the contacts so that you can uh, be in touch with her in case you need. Uh, Professor Lynn Rose, uh, an advocate of people with disabilities and scholar of disability studies, who has joined the faculty at the American University of Soleimani, Iraq, in 2016, following 20 years as a teacher scholar in the US and Germany. She serves as a professor in the social sciences at IUIS, American University in Soleimani, as well as the Director of Disability Studies at the Center for Gender and Development Studies. Dr. Rose was among the earliest disability historians and disability studies scholars. She has taught a wide variety of courses in disability studies and founded a minor in disability studies at her previous affiliation, Truman State University in the United States. In spring semester 2022, she taught the first disability studies course in all Iraq. Her earlier scholarship focused on disability studies in the ancient uh, Greco-Roman world. But more recently, her interest has shifted to disability studies in the contemporary global South. She has several current and forthcoming publications on public with disabilities in Kurdistan region of Iraq, and she is involved with the organizations of disability advocacy and has facilitated and attended various workshops and events for these organizations. Uh, I think uh, her CV is 16 pages, frankly speaking, we cannot be even selective, but her education, she has PhD in uh, history, the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, and uh, she has also uh, certificates in TEFL, teaching English as a foreign language, she has bachelor's degree again in history, and she has uh, hold, she has held several uh, posts and participated in course designs and teachings at different universities and at different uh, levels. She has also many publications. Some of them are published in very well-known uh, journals and centers of excellence. Uh, maybe you don't have time to uh, read them or refer to them. Uh, she is also a very active uh, writer. Uh, she writes blogs and uh, she wrote articles. She has done some uh, book reviews also and uh, presented several academic uh, speeches and lectures in uh, different uh, parts of the world and in different uh, capacities. She has also uh, participated in several podcasts, radios, and television and video recordings on different topics and uh, um, especially related to her uh, expertise. She has also uh, run and participated in several training workshops and uh, conferences and uh, symposiums. Uh, I think... Uh, that would be enough for a, a short introduction. I, as I said, it is actually 16 pages long. Uh, I can just say this selected pieces of her uh, CV and resume. Uh, now we will listen to uh, Professor Lin uh, talking about a uh, universal design, a, a disability studies context, and then uh, we might uh, open uh, a, a door or window for discussions and sharing our uh, experience in that field and seeing relating that to our education system and what we can do uh, next. Mamusta uh, Shamal, if the video is ready, uh, she sends her regards to all of you for your participation and for your patience. But unfortunately, she couldn't uh, be with us face-to-face -face live, but she recorded the webinar in advance 
and we are going to listen to her now. Hello, thank you for having me this evening. The title of my talk is Universal Design, a Disability Studies Context. I am Lynn Rose. I am a professor in the social sciences at AUIS. I'd like to thank Dr. Himdad Muhammad for inviting me. And I'd also like to thank the Megamind Plus Academy, the logo that you see here. Before I begin, I'll just note that I'll refer quite a bit to Introduction to Disability Studies. This is a class that I've been teaching at AUIS, and I've learned so much from my students, and especially from the guests from the community who come in to speak to us. I really welcome your questions and comments. I'm sorry I can't be with you live this evening, but please feel free to email me with uh, anything that you'd like to say. I love to talk about disability studies. My talk this evening is divided into four parts. I want to start by asking what is disability studies and then go on and ask what is universal design. Third, I'll ask, what is universal design for learning? And fourth, I'll ask, how can we get there? What is disability studies? This is a field of inquiry that started in the early 1980s and um, has become quite standard in the curriculum now. One of the premises in disability studies is that disability is normal. It's a characteristic. It's like having brown hair or green eyes or something like that. Disability is very common, too. At least 15% of the world's population is disabled. But the thing is, 80% of people with disabilities live in the Global South. IOM, the International Organization for Migration, estimated that as a country, Iraq has one of the highest populations of people with disabilities in the world. So again, in disability studies, we think of disability as normal. And in disability studies, we take the slogan, nothing about us without us, seriously. In the past, People with disabilities have been talked about, their fates have been decided on, without their opinions being sought. And uh, there's, there's uh, no more of that, or very little of that. That's one of the reasons that I have guest speakers who have disabilities come to my class, so that the students can hear the voices of disabled people. Another premise of disability studies is that disability is everywhere. When disability studies first started, a lot of uh, scholars said, oh no, you can't do that. There's no disabled history, there's no disability. And uh, one of the early scholars, Douglas Bainton, who studies deaf studies, said, well, yes, disability is everywhere. Once you start looking for it, this is such an important idea. And uh, this is what the students in my Intro to Disability Studies class come away with, at least in the ideal world, that they'll be able to see disability everywhere. This is a photo that one of my students took of Sahalika, and uh, he just commented on how inaccessible it is to anybody using a wheelchair, a blind person, somebody using crutches. And so he started seeing disability everywhere, not necessarily disabled people, but the whole environment of disability. And disability rights are human rights. The idea is people with disability are part of the community. As part of the community, they need to have access to everything that non-disabled people have. Ms. Connor came to talk to us a couple of weeks ago, and um, one of the things that she said that the students noted is that blind people have a right to education, and indeed, they, ha they have a right to learn. 
So do all disabled people. All disabled people have a right to learn. Just a note on vocabulary. You might have noticed already that I'm using the term disabled and um, not special needs. And uh, that's because I'm a Western scholar and in Western disability studies, the word disability is fine. There are even campaigns to uh, make people understand that, as you can see from this slide, disabled is not a dirty word. And here's another example of that um, in the West, in the UK, in the uh, EU, and the US. Um, the word disabled is a word of pride. We try to discourage people from using euphemisms like handicapable or differently abled or something like that. And another word that we try to discourage is actually special needs. I know here in Kurdistan, special needs is a term of respect. And another example of differences is in the UAE. They've started calling disabled people people of determination. Is that good? Is that bad? I don't know. One of my students had this opinion on it, though. Um, she said that it's a, a fancy name, but they started using it. The government started using it before everything was made accessible for these people of determination. Well, all of this is just to say I use the word disabled for all sorts of disabilities. I recognize that in Kurdish, special needs is a term of respect. I just don't use it when, um, when I'm speaking in English about disability studies. So now we're ready to move on to the second part. What is universal design? In order to understand universal design, I always introduce, introduce my students to some keywords such as access and accommodation. Access means exactly what it sounds like, being able to get into somewhere, being able to have access to something. And um, if a person's disability keeps them from having access, such as in this picture with the stairs, we can make accommodations. Accommodations can be as simple as this wheelchair ramp. It's not pretty, it's not elegant, but it works. It gives access to this building to someone who's using a wheelchair or anybody who has difficulty with stairs. Here's another example of accommodation. People of short stature in their own kitchen using accommodations to have access. Um, not elegant, not beautiful, but these step stools let them access their own kitchen. Standard design doesn't take into consideration people of short stature. UD goes beyond access and it goes beyond accommodation. Uh, UD just stands for universal design, of course. Universal design is about the built environment. It's an architectural principle. The built environment, our architecture, our urban landscape, really reflects our attitudes about who belongs, about who is welcome. And it also really shows who doesn't belong and who isn't welcome. What you see in this slide is one of my students' homework assignments. I asked them to take some photos and um, comment about the built environment. And uh, one of my students found these two opposing photos. One shows design that is welcoming and is accommodating on the left, the, um, the ramp that takes people up, whether they're using wheelchairs or crutches, whether they're short stature, everybody takes everybody up to the next level. 
And by contrast, he showed uh, on the right another photo where it's very difficult to get around. It's unwelcoming to people who don't have standard bodies. Ron Mace is an important figure in disability studies, and he's really the father of universal design. Uh, here he is in three different phases of his life. He acquired polio and became disabled at quite a young age, and uh, he died in 1988. Ron Mace was an architect, and uh, as a disabled person, he thought, well, let's build an accessible environment. Let's have a welcoming built environment. He thought along with his colleagues, why not design things from the ground up? So instead of having to make things accessible, instead of having to accommodate people, why not make everything accessible to everyone? Why not build things from the ground up so that they don't have to be modified? And he and his colleagues called this universal design. It's now completely accepted. There's a lot of scholarship on universal design, an architectural principle that serves everybody. Here are the seven principles of universal design. I won't go through each one just because of um, constraints of time, but you can see that they all make sense. That when we build something, we should think about simple and intuitive use. That we should think about the size and space for approach and use for everybody, not just people who can walk. That we should think about equitable use so that everybody is welcome and nobody is discriminated against. All of these add up to the seven principles. This slide also just shows how straightforward these seven principles are. Just a few examples. On the top left, instead of having a doorknob, which is uh, very difficult per, for people with limited uh, strength and grip to operate, why not build with levers? In the middle slide, you see a beautiful park with a lot of room for approach. So anybody can get into that park using crutches, using a wheelchair. There are even sensory markers for people who are blind. And then on the right, blind people can access the built environment. There's Braille. Uh, there's a, a sound equivalent of the walk and the don't walk sign. And if that's built from the ground up, then we don't have to put it in later. And then you also see on the uh, lower left, a uh, house plan, and the emphasis here is on light switches. Not everybody can access standard light switches, so why not build them for everybody the first time when designing something? The seven principles of universal design were employed in building the Ed Roberts campus in the US in uh, Berkeley, California. And um, I have this link here. It's also at the end of the slides. If you ever have time to watch this YouTube, it very clearly explains the seven principles and then shows how they were built on this campus. So to summarize UD, it is for everyone. It's not um, accommodations for disabled people. It's the idea of you having our built environment, having our architecture built so that it serves everybody, disabled people, non-disabled people, everyone in between. What these silhouettes show here in this slide is how everybody benefits from universal design. People using wheelchairs, of course, but also uh, people pushing strollers, um, people using canes or crutches, people who are carrying things, pregnant people, pregnant women, um, people pushing bicycles, 
It's for everybody. It says you are welcome to everybody. Now we're ready for the third part. What is UDL? Universal Design for Learning. People saw universal design for architecture and thought, huh, maybe this could be applied to the classroom too. Maybe education could be designed so that everybody could benefit, not just people with standard ways of learning. The first organization that started to apply this was CAST. So 1984, originally it started with a big emphasis on technology. And that's why the acronym is a little funny, C-A-S-T. Um, the T is for technology. But this is the idea of taking all the principles of universal design in architecture, applying it to education. And I really love CAST's mission. Their mission statement is to transform education, design, and practice until learning has no limits. Just like UD, UDL is for everyone. It's not a system for people with learning disabilities. It's a system for everyone. And that's because we all have different learning styles. We all have different learning strengths and weaknesses. I always like to demonstrate this by having my students take these learning quizzes. And I've put the links here in case you ever want to um, see what kind of learner you are. There are two learning quizzes, one called How Do You Learn? And one that um, indicates if you're a visual, auditory, or a kinesthetic learner, or a mix by taking these quizzes. It's helpful to know one's learning style because then you can just figure out when and how you learn better. So the point is, yeah, we all have learning variances. We all have learning differences. The very top link here on learner variability is just a, a really short YouTube on um, that talks about how our learning is just about as individual as our fingerprints. There's no one standard best way to learn. And that's what UDL recognizes, that there's no one best standard way to learn. The principles that they use, of course, draw on the principles of UD, but they're organized a little differently. They're organized into engagement, representation, and action and expression. These three principles are described in much more depth on the website, and I've put the link here in case you ever have time to look through this. You can find out the details about these principles of UDL. And here's another nice link, just a short YouTube video that explains the three principles of UDL uh, very nicely, very succinctly. Again, all of these links are gathered at the end of this presentation. How do we recognize learning disabilities in the classroom? Uh, this is a nice website that talks about the seven most common learning disabilities. Uh, the, the site was made for psychology professionals, but it's been very helpful to me, not as a, as a psychology professional, but just as an ordinary instructor. And I'll show you the seven most common learning disabilities in the next slides. These come from the website that I just showed you. Uh, so the three most common kinds of learning disability are these dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. I think we've all experienced them if we've been in the classroom. Um, dyslexia has to do mostly with reading and writing. 
There are different kinds of dyslexia, of course. Sometimes it's described as the words just jumping around on the page. Uh, dysgraphia has to do with handwriting. It's not just bad handwriting, though that's one of the ways uh, that it can be recognized. Um, but these students have trouble converting their thoughts into writing or drawing. They're not being stubborn. They, ha they just have this learning disability. And then dyscalculia uh, has to do with math. It's not just being really bad at math like I am. It's having a learning disability and just really, really struggling with numbers. APD, auditory, auditory processing disorder, is not about um, deafness. It's not about the ears. It's about processing sounds. And um, then a subset of that is LPD, the language processing disorder. And again, it's about having challenges processing spoken language, both receptive and expressive. The sixth most common kind of learning disability uh, has to do with decoding nonverbal behaviors and social cues. This often goes hand in hand with other sorts of disabilities. For example, autism. Most of us are completely able to read uh, facial expressions such as anger, but some people simply cannot process this. So if you're expressing, say, anger to a student and the student is looking at you blankly, the student isn't being defiant. That student can't process the nonverbal um, things that you're, uh, that you're trying to express. And then finally, number seven, the um, VP or VMD, visual perceptive or visual motor deficit. And this is mostly about poor hand-eye coordination. It uh, can get confused with the other learning disabilities, um, but it's more about coordination. The main point here when talking about these learning disabilities is that for every learning disability, there are accommodations, there are learning strategies, and there are assistive technologies. And that's why I've provided this link. Uh, it's a link to the PDF of the LD Resource Guide. Here's the table of contents from the LD Resource Guide. You can see here so many different areas that can result in learning disability. So there are two main areas, one linked to psychological processes and one linked to academic and social skills. Within the first category, you see everything from executive functioning, attention, verbal comprehension, and so on. But um, Every, for every category here, this guide goes through what are the accommodations, what are the learning strategies, what are the assistive technologies. Most of these learning strategies, assistive technologies, and accommodations are free of cost or very low of cost. They mostly have to do with common sense, like allowing uh, time and a half for taking tests or um, providing uh, tutors. I want to point out here that when I'm talking about accommodations and assistive technologies, I'm not talking about a magic bullet. I'm tr not trying to say that Everybody can have a university education if they just have accommodations. No, I do believe that everyone can learn. All people are capable of learning. There are some severe learning disabilities that often go hand in hand with other disabilities that do limit people. 
Um, and for this, this is another situation. This is not a university situation. In um, Suli, in Kurdistan, we have, for example, the Radoz Center that deals with um, children with severe learning disabilities. And uh, Mr. Rahman Ali, who's the director of the Radoz Center and of the Suli Autism Center, he's the president of that, he came to talk to my class about these severe uh, learning disabilities. And of course, there's special education. Dr. Kani Salar came to the class and talked about um, special education and the different kinds of learning disability that special education is designed for. But if we want to design accessible higher education, accessible education in the universities, how do we get there? This is the last part of my talk. Well, we have to listen to the organizations of people with disabilities. Nothing about us without us. We have to get input with people who have the experience of accessibility and lack of accessibility. Um, and one of the groups that's very worthwhile is the High Council of Special Needs Organizations. Um, these are the heads of the main OPDs in Suli, and um, if you don't know these people and would like their contact information, I would be so happy to share it with you. And another thing we have to note is that there's a lot that goes into making higher education accessible, developing the service, finding out who can be for example, a sign language interpreter, uh, who's going to test students with learning disabilities and devise accommodations. The ideal way to make higher education accessible is to have an OAE, an Office of Access Accessible Education. I would just note, though, that there are a lot of cultural differences around disability between the Global North and the Global South. Some of the models in the Global North about disability simply don't fit in the Global South. For example, one of the places of emphasis in the Global North is that of autonomy and independence. And in the Global South, we really have an emphasis on family. So this Office of Accessible Education has to be sure to be set up with this in mind, with these cultural differences in mind. We can't just take the global north and plop it onto the global south. It's not going to work. We have to decide in the global south uh, uh, what people with disabilities need. I think there are probably other places that can design an Office of Accessible Education with the Global South in mind. I, I don't know of them, but I do know of this consulting company. I'll provide a link if you want to take a look, uh, KOGC. They um, have developed office of, Offices of Accessible Education with the needs of uh, Global South communities in mind. They came to AUIS, and though our admin um, is not ready for an Office of Accessible Education yet, they still worked with us to provide what they could toward accessible education. On the right, you can just see a little uh, picture of the two um, uh, directors of KOGC. One is in the um, uh, on the left, and the other is on the middle, in the middle, on the right. I think we have to go beyond offices of accessible education. I think the whole community, the whole world needs to be educated in disability studies. Um, we all have to understand that accessibility is good for everybody. This is just a, uh, um, summary of disability studies from one of my students in a past semester. And um, he just um, 
points out how disability is crucial to his major. I think every major should have a little bit of knowledge about disability studies. And one of my students wrote this piece called Introduction to Disability Studies, a class that changed my perspective. So she really uh, understood disability studies and how important it is to be integrated into the curriculum. And the link to this article is provided here. That is the end of my talk on disability studies, universal design, universal design for learning, and some thoughts on how we can implement it all. Thank you so much for listening to me. These are the links that I mentioned. They're in order of the mentioning. As I said before, I really welcome any questions or comments that you have. And again, this is my email address. Thank you so much. Wow, it was, it was really great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your patience and thanks for Professor Lynn uh, Rose for this uh, interesting topic and interesting introduction uh, to universal design, universal design and to disability studies. And actually uh, we need this, uh, uh, I mean, very much in our context also. Uh, even though some people might think that the infrastructure is not uh, suitable, the infrastructure is not ready in our schools, in our universities, but the idea is first to have an understanding of what disability means and what, what it takes. But in addition to, uh, I mean, um, instead of making things ready, we have what she called accommodation. And then if not in case of building new schools, in case of building new university campuses, and in case of new businesses also, we have to think of all uh, these uh, uh, interesting uh, principles and foundations of uh, how we can make education, how we can make business, how we can make uh, everything accessible to everyone, not only ordinary normal people or able people, if we can use uh, instead of uh, or as opposite of disabled. I, I um, um, We, in our context, we usually prefer the word people with special needs, but if you think about it in a um, linguistic perspective or linguistically, we can say that uh, this uh, would be kind of hurting the feelings of others who don't want to be called people with special needs. Uh, they are somehow, they, are, they have limitations, uh, but they are also all human beings. They have the right to have access to everything like anybody else. So thank you very much again. Um, now we will try to uh, take some comments or additions or ideas that came up with this. If anybody wants to say something, we can uh, listen to them. Thank you very much. Uh, as we said, it was an interesting topic. Uh, the idea now, the until somebody raises his or her hand or writes a question or a comment. Uh, the idea is we all know that in everywhere you go, in every city, in every, we have people with uh, disabilities. But what we have done for them and disabilities, as uh, Professor Rose mentioned, uh, are of different kinds and different types and different degrees and levels. The, the controversy now is whether to put them with ordinary students or to have special classes for them. Um, uh, Huda uh, raised her hand. So um, we will talk about this question when, when she finishes. Yes, uh, Ms. Huda, you can open your mic, please. Yes. Hey, uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Huda Halawichi from the Department of English, College of Arts, University of Mosul. Um, nice to meet you, Dr. Huda. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for 
actually organizing such a webinar over here and uh, to tackle uh, such a crucial area that we um, personally, I do believe that we lack such an area in our academia and the academic work uh, works uh, as far as theses and dissertations and even our research papers. Um, what I uh, know or what I have just listened uh, to uh, the professor, she, she mentioned or she combined between two things, as I guess. She combined between the foundation, that is finding the suitable context, the suitable places, um, classes for the disabled people. And uh, the second thing is that um, I think she's after um, um, designing a syllabus uh, for education at different levels. I think these two points are important to, to think about and tackle in our education sphere of research. Um, something else I, I can combine according to the best of my knowledge between uh, the, the such terms like disabled people, disability, and uh, what's called political correctness. Actually, I have started working on or thinking to uh, thinking about working on a project uh, years back um, concerning uh, political cor correctness. One of the uh, items um, in that uh, sphere of research is about disabled or how to use euphemistic expressions uh, as far as um, disabled people are concerned and uh, handicapped and, and the like. Also, I combine, I could combine between the disability as a term and what, what do we have nowadays uh, as, as a common uh, phenomenon, which is bullying. I think these, these areas are related to each other where disabled and disability, such connected terms or such interrelated terms are, uh, are there. But the, the basic thing that we should think about is how to start, uh, I mean, in, in our place, Iraq, and she mentioned that, the professor mentioned that the highest ratio concerning the disabled people um, is in Iraq, which is um, 15 percent. Yes, which is something threatening, actually. Yeah. So we should think about the, the, the issue as a, a serious issue, and we should start uh, thinking and working about how to uh, start with the disabled and disability as far as education is concerned, as, a, as far as the foundation uh, is concerned. I know that uh, in, uh, we have over here, uh, even in my college, in my department, some people who are disabled, they are using the wheelchair in some department, in some departments, including my, my department. Um, so I, I feel some, somehow when, when seeing those, those people and, and uh, that I, I, can't, I can't do anything to them, they are just using the wheelchair and mm -hmm. some people are uh, trying to help them from time to time because we do not have that, that suitable foundation for them as far as the class is concerned, as, the, as far as the way to reach the college is concerned and the like. Something else, it's about the, you know, the, the education or the syllabus, the design of the syllabus, because we, we do not have only one type of disabled people. That's we fine. Think about, yeah, we can think about different different uh, uh, cases as far as the disability is, is concerned. Um, actually, we, we need to work together in Iraq uh, as far as our colleges, universities, departments, and to try to start from the scratch, actually. I feel that we, we are, we're going to start from the scratch because everything uh, over here is not promising as far as those people uh, are concerned. Thank you very much. For, Thank for, you very uh, much. Doing. Thank you very much, Dr. Huda. Thank you for being with us uh, from University of Mosul. I hope, uh, I know it's maybe your first time, but I hope it will not be the last. How, how did you know about this event, Dr. Huda? Thank you. Uh, interesting. Uh, good. I, I agree with, with what Dr. Huda said. Dr. Huda, I think this is your first time Sorry, with doctor. us in the webinars. Sorry, Dr. Hemdad. Sorry. No problem. Uh, how did you know about this event, this webinar? 
Okay, well, um, I think no, it's it's not. I think uh, it's Dr. Marwan. Uh, Dr. Marwan, I said I sent it to him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He Very shared good. shared the webinar uh, at our department uh, yeah. group, and this I am here today. Yeah, thank you very much for being with us. And regards to Dr. Marwan, I sent it to him. Uh, I, I asked him to share with uh, the staff. Uh, so thank you for being with us. I, I agree with most of what you said, Dr. Huda, but we can we can start everyone from his own place. Uh, I have two two cases. I had two cases when I was working at a private university called the uh, Knowledge University. We had two uh, such cases, actually. One of them was on a wheelchair, and the other one was uh, using uh, crutches, as, as we can say. The, the thing I had, I had a post there, so I had the ability to make some changes or to at least to take some decisions. The first thing, uh, his name was Abdullah. He was uh, from College of Business Administration, and his department was on the third floor. I remember when he registered in the university, I have asked for the head of the department and I asked him to change the weekly timetable holes in that group where Abdullah was until he has graduated. Uh, we brought all the classes of Abdullah's group to the first floor so that he can access the class like any uh, ordinary student. So he, he, he he did it very successfully and uh, he graduated, thankfully. The other one, his name was Yusuf, who was on wheelchairs. Actually, when he came, we didn't have this wheelchair ramps. We had stairs, so he had always had to have two people help him or at least carry his wheelchair, him with, his, with the wheelchair until he passes the uh, stairs, the small stairs. Then we have uh, created a a ramp uh, for him and then he was able to come by himself and to go to have access to the halls uh, without help from anybody else so the idea is we can do anything that we can we should not wait to say that the infrastructure is not ready uh, we always can do that thank you very much uh, i think there was uh, a, a request from uh, dr dara uh, we will be sharing the slides with you. In the slides, uh, the PowerPoints, you will be able to click on the links and then uh, you will have access to the YouTubes and to the PDF file also later on. Hopefully this will be recorded also. It is fully recorded. And then the link of the recording will be shared with you through the uh, groups that we have created and it will be uh, posted and uh, in our, on our YouTube channel also, so that you can share it with your contacts, with, with people who might be interested in that. I think uh, there was another question from uh, Mr. Irfan, uh, who's uh, Irfan, or I don't know, or just a minute, let me check, uh, who's asking about what's the difference between, ah, yeah, are there any differences between disabled people and people with special needs? I think. Dr. Uh, Rose talked about it, Mr. Irfan, that it is a matter of terminology. It's a matter of where you live in the cultures that we brought up in. As she said, in UK, in US, and in the EU, maybe they prefer disabled people, uh, disabled uh, people, this terminology. But in, in, some, in our country, for example, in our context, they say uh, that people use different terms but the most uh, harmless term is people with special needs because if you say come and dumb handicapped or mawak and then um, they, they call it in arabic they call it so uh, they think that this is keeping the balance and trying not to have any negative uh, uh, meanings or negative uh, expressions attached with it uh, so I, I guess there is no uh, specific difference uh, between these two terminologies. Sazan uh, Saidgo, yes, Mausa Sazan. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Sazan. Uh, 
I really appreciate Dr. Anun and Megamind uh, staff uh, for sharing this great full um, uh, webinar. So uh, about the title concerning the title, it really uh, reminds me the theory of uh, Garner, which he discovered the multiple intelligence. And as he stated that, that we are all, uh, we can not say that we are all disabled in some specific area in life. And Howard Gardner that discovered eight multiple intelligence in human. And it is unfair to call those uh, have special needs to say dis disabled. Actually, we are all disabled in specific area. And for example, recently um, it announced that an autistic person in each week he can learn, he can learn a language in a week, imagine. Mm -hmm. So can you compare that? Can you do that as a, we can walk, we can speak, we can hear. We are all, we are safe and we are uh, very, uh, let's say in a good manner, but can we do that? So his uh, and his uh, capacity in uh, in linguistic intelligence is in a high level, mm -hmm. and uh, if you compare ourselves, so it is us that it is we that we are disabled. And at the end, I said uh, shortly, thank God that uh, Allah created us in different colors that we can fulfill each other's necessity and needs. Thank you, Doctor. That's right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Sazan, I, we have different, uh, I mean, many instances of people with special needs or people, people what we call disabled are very intelligent and very geniuses. And just very, uh, in our culture, I mean, in the Western, in the Eastern culture, many very good reciters of Holy Quran were uh, kind of blind. They were not able to see. So when uh, God Almighty takes away an ability from you, he will compensate it in a different way, in, an, in another way, actually. So thank you very much. Yes, uh, Mr. Nabas. Nabas? Yes, please. Yes, uh, Dr. Nabas. Uh, good night. Uh, thank you so much to organize uh, the webinar and uh, I have to thank us to have the doctor, uh, Professor Lenny, uh, to, uh, to discuss about disability uh, studies in context. Actually, uh, according to my experience uh, uh, in India, I think uh, disability studies, uh, doctor, actually it is a very famous and difficult uh, subject around the world. Uh, even in India and Kurdistan, actually, uh, I think, uh, uh, disabilities, people in every place, uh, they have uh, needed to uh, get full service. But actually, I didn't still know, uh, I didn't see uh, the, the, the service to uh, supporting them in class, in room, in home, in family, in school, in university. Actually, uh, if we discuss about this disability subject, uh, we have so many ideas according to, especially according to social thinkers. Uh, uh, but uh, and now uh, we have a limited time. I have just a question presented to the professor and the response please uh, the question. How can we uh, increase people's awareness to serve the disability and look at them as ordinary people as normal thank people you very much. thank, thank you, you so very much, much mr nevis thank you very much thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay uh, as we said we can start from our own we can start from ourselves uh, at least try to uh, facilitate their daily jobs and then we can influence our family and then our um, environment of, of, of our work uh, to the best of our uh, capacity because we should never wait uh, for governments, for officials to understand or to do that, because it may take time. They might be willing to do it. They don't know. They might be uh, have uh, the willingness, but they don't have the, uh, I don't know, financial uh, support for that. But at least 
uh, we have to start from our own selves and then our own work workplace and environment that we have influencing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, back to the idea of, uh, I want to ask this question. What do you think? Do you think that disabled people should have special classes or they should be integrated with ordinary uh, classes? Because there are two poles of ideas, theories, and the controversy is still that. Previously, people mostly thought that people with special needs, they should have special classes and they should be separate from uh, that. And actually some countries, some cities, some schools, they have applied that. But recently now the idea have changed that uh, they should be integrated with ordinary people. They should not be dealt with as a separate case, as a separate special uh, people. In some specific classes, maybe they need, they need somebody to help them, they need a tutor, they need a, a facilitator more than ordinary people, but uh, usually uh, the, the new idea is, we call it inclusive education, that it should include all and they should not be separate. Um, if, if anybody has anything about this topic, we can listen to them. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Huda has raised her hand. Just let me see if there's anybody else wants to say something. Okay. Okay, Dr. Huda, please. Okay, hello again. Yes, please. Uh, you can, uh, we cannot hear you. Your mic is not open. Dr. Huda, yes. No. Once more. Okay. It is open now. Yes. Okay. Um, as far as uh, the question you have just uh, raised, Doctor, um, I mean, if we could include uh, uh, disabled people in in uh, in normal classes. Um, I think in, in, in case just like our country, Iraq, um, it's better for me personally, though I have uh, not that much experience, but I think, I think um, it's better to start with uh, or to include those disabled people uh, in, uh, not to include, but to have their own classes um, for, for some time. Then after 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 a while they they uh, they can be included in normal classes. Mm -hmm. I think I think this is this is better for for both parties. I mean the learners and the the even, uh, uh, their peers in the class. You know that um, um, if we think about our colleges, universities, uh, schools um, at different ages, we can we can. We cannot start with with uh, you know uh, including those uh, people in in uh, normal classes. I think they we need time. All of us we need time as uh, you know professionals, experts, teachers to um, develop our I mean our the syllabus that you are after the mm -hmm. foundation we have till reaching um, a period where, where we can include uh, the disabled people in normal. Yeah, thank you very, thank much. You very much. Thank you, Dr. Ruda. Um, as we said, this, this, uh, this question, uh, it depends on the type of disability and the degree of disability. Um, I know that we cannot put uh, a blind uh, people just out of blue, I mean, with no preparations with ordinary class, unless he has someone with him helping and deaf people and uh, maybe autistic uh, uh, people with high degree of autism, they cannot be uh, at the same level, but the, the solution is not to separate them also for the whole lifetime or school time. There should be time periods where they are together mixing with ordinary people 
and uh, in and some other occasions they they could be separated or they could be dealt with uh, a special tutor for them it is good for both for the people with special with special needs or people with disability and the ordinary people because we have to work not only to provide the the services the accommodation for disabled people but we have to work on the ordinary people mindset of how do they think of these people if we separate them so they will not be communicating with each other there will be very little understanding between them and no connection at all so it's better to mix them up with ordinary people so that ordinary people will know better what are their their needs and then the, they will their trust and their respect also and they will not treat with them as as abnormal people they are normal so thank you very much uh, it depends on the, what kind of help they need mr Irfan has written uh, people with down syndrome autism cannot be for example with the same uh, class or cannot be educated in inclusive education classes and that's right it also depends on the severity of autism or down syndrome also thank you very much uh, wishing you all the best thank you for your patience it was really interesting an interesting topic i really learned a lot from their presentation so um, thank you again and stay tuned with us for the coming weeks uh, and for other uh, webinars just to remind you these are our contacts of the mega mind plus academy uh, through different uh, platforms and social uh, networks and this is our youtube channel where you can uh, get access to our uh, previous webinars uh, most of them related to uh, education training and consultancy thank you very much for the uh, people who are uh, mega mind plus staff that uh, have worked hard in order to make preparations and organizations for uh, the arrangement of this mm -hmm. webinar and previous ones, especially uh, Mr. Shamal. And uh, we will be in touch. Uh, as we said, there will be an announcement of uh, PTE uh, techniques course soon. And next week, we have also a very interesting topic. It will be in Kurdish this time, but it is, uh, it's a very interesting topic and uh, we will announce it soon. We have prepared some other um, events for after the feast also. So stay tuned to uh, Megamind Plus Academy. Thank you very much and have a good night.